Did you know that wheat in Egypt was used as an offering to the gods, a sustenance for the people, and one of the first known forms of compensation? There is no other civilization where wheat has played such a vital role in their success. Wheat was present in the rise and fall of the Egyptian empire. And today, I'm gonna to take you on a six month long process, growing, harvesting, and milling the wheat. Going, going, back, back. Allow us to reintroduce ourselves. Our name is Going, Going, Back, Back. In 2019, we had three kids under five, a new minivan, and a house full of things. With our eldest due to start school in a few months, we decided it was now or never to take an extended vacation. And so we set off to explore the world and be back in time for his first day. We were several months into our trip when the pandemic hit and schools around the globe shut down. It confirmed the idea that was already brewing in our minds, that there was no better classroom than the one our kids were already in, the world. We sold our minivan gave away everything that couldn't fit into a suitcase and became full-time travelers. Join us as we very slowly travel the world, going, 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 going back, 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 back. The annual flood of the Nile helps irrigate and fertilize the land. This makes farming near the Nile one of the best places on earth for agriculture. You can still see channels of irrigation that have been made to allow the Nile water to fertilize the land all over Upper Egypt. The Nile water has a vast amount of vitamins and minerals that help produce nutrient-rich fruits and vegetables throughout the years. Here a local farmer tends to his crops and gets ready for the milling season. It takes around four to six months for this entire process to be completed. Depending on the size of your field, you may need to get an entire team to help you harvest the wheat before it is time to take it to the mill and grind it into flour. Wheat was part of the complex bartering system in Egypt. It is also one of the first known forms of currency. To this day, some families still rely on their wheat harvest each year to provide them with the income they need for the entire year. Wheat and loaves of bread played a strong part in their economic system. They were basically a moneyless culture. Yes, we hear about the pharaohs and their gold, but this was for adornment of kings and queens. The common men and peasants had no access to gold. Okay, now that we have a little history, we're gonna head over to Captain Gabar's land for the harvesting process. You know, no laughing. You don't want the smiling. <laughs> but 24 hours you will. Yeah. The milling process takes place at nighttime because if you know anything about Egypt, it is so hot in the summertime. During the days, most people avoid doing heavy lifting or hard labor during the months of the harvest season. The life cycle of Osiris was thought to have mirrored the life cycle of the wheat production in Egypt. Osiris showed the spiritual significance of wheat in the Egyptian culture. This machine will be used to separate the wheat kernels before being washed and dried in the sun before being taken to the mill. It almost looks like it's snowy in Egypt. All of the children of the farmers who are harvesting the wheat are present for this process. This machine makes it possible for the Egyptian farmers to harvest their wheat each season. Although Egyptian wheat farming has been around for many years, Farmers face the hardest times they have ever faced in years. The subsidized diesel that farmers rely on to run this machine and power their irrigation is in short supply now. Egypt is the largest importer of wheat in the world. Egypt exports 10 million tons of wheat each year. A US government report says that Egypt's estimation for how much they produce is not quite accurate. Egypt's prime minister has announced that they want to diversify its sources of wheat, as he described as 
specific sources for this problem. Many people don't know that Egypt relies heavily on Russia and the Ukraine for their sources of wheat. The subsidized bread that many Egyptians rely on is made using Ukrainian wheat. The Russian-Ukraine crisis has disrupted the wheat distribution in Egypt. At least 80% of its needs are from Russia and Ukraine. These surges in wheat prices are directly impacting the country on a whole. For those farming locally like Captain Gabar and his team, the effects of the wheat shortage don't resonate the same way. Egypt is planning on cutting its wheat imports by 8% next year. This will provide more jobs for local farmers like Captain Gabar and his team. According to the Egypt Ministry of Supply, in 2022, Egypt consumed 20.5 thousand metric tons of wheat. That same year, they also imported 10.5 thousand metric tons. 80% of the imports come from Russia and Ukraine. The outbreak of coronavirus and the conflict with Russia and Ukraine has led the government to aim to produce 70% of the wheat locally by the year 2030. Food that was once plentiful in ancient Egypt due to the nutrient-dense soils are now a pastime due to the change in weather conditions and the growth in population throughout Egypt. What once was a seasonal job that each member of the community participated in has now turned into an economic institution that plays a vital role in the future success of Egypt. With the prices of wheat soaring, Aish Beledi, the national bread of Egypt, has become harder and harder to produce at its once cost-efficient price. The bread in Egypt accounts for 35 to 39 percent of caloric intake per person, according to the International Policy Food Research Institute. The cost of the wheat is also affecting Egypt's national dish, kushari, which relies heavily on whole wheat pasta. The bread consumption per capita in Egypt is 150 to 180, to 180 kg per year, nearly three times that of the global average, according to official statistics. Egypt has taken long steps to keep bread affordable. Shortly after the end of World War I, it imported wheat from Australia and sold it at a loss in government-owned shops in effort to lower the domestic prices. It benefits not only Captain Gabar and his neighbors to process their own wheat throughout the year, but it also gives them an opportunity to save money throughout the year. Once the kernels finish drying in the sun, we bag them up and take them to the mill. What a process. During that time, I saw the wheat planted, grow, get harvested, and in the next process, milled into flour. Here, Captain Gabar washes the wheat kernels off before laying them out in the sun to dry. This is the same way wheat was harvested and dried thousands of years ago by ancient Egyptians. Why does Egypt rely on imported wheat? South Africa produces 2.1 million tons of wheat each year. Morocco, 2.6. Algeria, 3 million tons. Ethiopia, 5.5. Egypt produces 10 million tons each year. You can see why Egypt relies heavily on the importation of wheat. Well, after all that history and knowledge about the wheat in Egypt, from ancient times to present, we are here at the mill. This has been a long and fun six month process. When you come to the mill, each bag has a family's name written on it. This way, each family can pick up their wheat when it's done being milled. From start to finish, this is one of the most interesting projects I've ever been a part of. After taking the kernels to the mill, families can receive up to 200 kilos or more, which can last families up to six months, which allows them time to get the fields ready for the next season. Just look at the texture of that flour. This will produce some of the best bread I've ever had. Stay tuned for our next video as I take a deep dive into the making of sun bread with Captain Gabor and his family. This Egyptian flour produces some of the most dense bread, far more coarse than the bread that is available in the stores you buy every day. This nutrient dense bread 
has been a staple of the Egyptian diet for thousands of years. I would like to personally thank Captain Gabor and his family for letting me be a part of the six month long process. I've learned not only about the hard work it takes to make bread, but the patience that goes into this process. Ancient Egyptians helped pave the way for modern Egypt to thrive through wheat production. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and join us as we continue to bring you exciting adventures from around the world.